Who sank the Lusitania? The RMS Lusitania, Britain's royal mail ship, was launched in 1906 before RMS Mauritania, her nearly identical twin. Both were revolutionary in size and speed, utilizing the new steam turbines that could exceed 25 knots per hour. Lusitania set a new standard in passenger comfort and luxury in first class. She achieved fame during 100 round-trip crossings of the Atlantic until her 101st return trip in 1915 from New York to Liverpool in the west of England. The Cunard Line's peacetime colors were distinctive, white and black with red-orange smokestacks. When Europe went to war in 1914, the Mauritania was armed and camouflaged to become a troop ship. But Lucy continued in passenger and cargo service with gray upper works and black funnels. The day before Lucy's scheduled departure, U-Boat 20 set out from Emden in Germany, heading north around the British Isles. That same day, U.S. newspapers warned that civilian ships would be subject to attack without warning. The Kaiser had declared a war zone to achieve a submarine blockade of England, the U-20 was 210 feet long to Lucy's 787 feet, but heavier warships had been sunk with a single torpedo. When Lucy entered the Irish Channel, her expected cruiser escort didn't show up. It was hiding in port in Queenstown for fear of submarine attack. The morning of May 7th saw heavy fog, but it cleared to a calm, bright day in time for Lucy to meet U-20 returning from St. George's Channel. The sub had sunk three ships in two days. This starboard side shows the torpedo strike. Most surviving witnesses saw the track of only one torpedo, but heard two explosions in rapid succession. The secondary blast has been blamed on steam boilers or coal dust, but explosives are most likely if a torpedo hit the cargo hold at the water line just below the bridge. The Lucy was loaded with rifle and artillery ammunition and possibly gun cotton shell propellant for the war effort. Hull plates were blown inward, then outward, flooding both the narrow bow and the starboard side coal bunkers. The decks immediately listed to starboard and the nose dipped as she went down by the bows. Sadly, the engines would not reverse, but kept steaming forward, making it impossible to safely lower boats. Most boats that did reach the water were swamped by forward motion, washed back along the hull or crushed by other falling boats. Some hung by their safety chains and dumped their passengers. There were enough lifeboats for all 1,965 souls aboard, but the starboard ones stood out eight feet from the rail, while the loaded portside boats swung inward on deck to crush waiting passengers. Then they inevitably broke loose and slid forward on the crowded deck. To make things worse, many who leaped from the moving ship were swept astern into the giant propellers that rose out of the water, still turning. In all, 1,201 aboard the Lucy died that day. It can truly be said that the Lusitania sank in a sea of blood. But the survivors have a hopeful story to tell in my novel, Lusitania Lost, due out in October from Mango Publishing. <laughs>